Hello, good morning and welcome back to the fish locker. Today I'm going to be helping my friend Mikey again on his boat Julie Girl Hawley's Monkfish Gear. We are early, early morning and we're just heading out. We'll see you when the sun's up. Definitely my favourite time of day. Yeah. For anybody curious, the machine at the back of the boat is called a net flaker. It draws the net over and helps to untangle it, then lays it out flat at the back. Any of the really big tangles from the crabs and things like that, you pull out by hand before it goes through the flaker. All right. 
very bloody fast. I mean, this one probably mold one more time, then it'll be put on an extra third to half its body size, and then that'll be it, really. Although it's my friendly name, but now I didn't realise it spread further. Typical that I'm just changing batteries around where best fish comes aboard. He's biting down on the stone. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to open his claw and lean about like that, jam the stone in, you can see the sort of fleshy bit there, yeah. and he just touch it there. Oh, literally, because it's, it's, it's under tension. Mm. As soon as it feels anything sharp, it just tears. It's it like a ligament yeah, tear. Yeah, it breaks, and it won't bleed through the hole. And, and yeah, that, that claw now is, yeah, it's just... That's the first string of nets aboard. 
weights, towels, and that net's all stored under there. And we have Because he's bringing his gear ashore, we're not going to shoot that one straight back. We're going to pick them both up, take them both ashore. So much stunning fish.
Come on, right big one. Job, uh, it makes my job easier passing them here. Though. Right. 
around the arms because it was close. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't even get the fingers around it. Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Yeah. But it had a bit of a sort of bad when you fall out thing and um uh, like the plate broke and um and the engine can be stalled properly, blah 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 and um well, I had a massive and his dad fell out terribly sadly and um it's up to the six mile limit. Brett will hopefully be back out soon in his replacement boat and um Yeah, they, they, one way they're lovely and smooth, the other way they're really, really serrated, aren't they? And, um, yeah. That's your manipulator. Yeah. That's how they croak. So by, by moving its antennas up and down, is that croaking sound. Yeah. And their claws are quite interesting. It's not like a lobster's claws where it's got two move. It's just... Like half a moving part and a very yeah. much of the other. I'd say it's still giving you a nip, wouldn't it? Because they're yeah, still yeah. pointy on yeah. there. But either um, they're beautiful looking. <laughs> <laughs> Try to stifle the sneeze as I'm. <laughs> it's much better using one of them than trying to stretch them with your fingers, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. Right, so but if you put them in a store pot without those on, they'll uh, basically cut all the other lobsters in the store pot, oh. all the other crawfish, if they punch themselves through that. Right. They don't load of dead things in the store pot. I, I still can't grow with that tail because each yeah. one of the fans is Soft. like malleable, yeah. whereas a lobster's tail. Mm. I don't know, I'll just grab one out to you. Get a wet yeah. sleeve. That seems to both now. Whereas like your lobster tail, Solid. yeah, and the claws are, he's got a lot of weight in him this guy, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, they're a good size out here, they're, you know, the ones inch are generally, well, there's a difference. pretty much just legal aren't they, or pad over, Yeah. whereas out here they're all generally a teeter around. So if you catch one out here, you're generally looking at a, yeah. a side one. Yeah. Some stunning cock crabs in there. I mean, look at the size of their the size of their claws. This is why. This is why with the, with the edible crabs, you saw him knocking the claws where you, you stop them from. Because otherwise, you would just end up with like crab pate in there, wouldn't you? You oh, just well, end, yeah. you'd end up with one like real. Every big, time they bite one of their friends on a leg or a claw, that will just fall off. You'd end up with just yeah. one get massive cock crab sat at the end and a lot all the loads, loads and loads of bits and yeah. pieces. But the spider crabs, you don't need to because they're, they're pinchers. Well, look at the difference. That one there, that one there. The bicep on it. Very little of them is actually is their stomach contents, isn't it? The yellow bit. No, I mean about 
with a monk. Yeah. This oh, is this, is, this is its belly cavity here, isn't yeah, yeah. it? Whereas a turbot, it's yeah, a tiny amount. It's only literally got literally there, round to there. It's got a very small stomach for the size yeah. of the fish, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, I should imagine this is a male one being small. Because the females are big, and then you'll get you'll see the big orange sort of bulge down there because well, they're coming into some spawning season. The females are always a lot bigger. So yeah, massive mouths on them for their size. Yeah. Get me gloves on. We've finished cleaning down, we've prepped all the catch, we've got all the fish is under ice in there. Got all your crabs, it is a monster that cock crab on top of there. Got a lobster in there and we have a couple of a couple of crayers in here. Now I'm keeping these monk heads, all these heads here from the monkfish. I'm keeping all of those and I'm going to use those in my lobster pots. So absolutely nothing today will go to waste. Offload the catch and I'll go and do my pots. You <laughs> cheeky sod there. So you've got your turbot and your monkfish tails. I hope you enjoyed joining us, I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later.